This tutorial will show you how we can add property controls to code components in Framer Web. This allows a richer experience when prototyping with Framer Web by exposing controls in the properties panel. With this, you can reuse components you've made and make collaboration with others much easier. This is Coding with Seth. Let's see what we'll be building. Throughout the series, we'll be building out some screens you might see in a mobile banking app. In another video, exploring code components, we created our first code components, which are usable in code, but not as flexible as they could be. Now, we're going to add property controls, so we can use our components for different screens and tweak them to match our design. This tutorial series is best viewed in the context of Framer Web. If you're on YouTube, use the link in the description to follow along. First, I'll explain what exactly they are. Then, we'll see how we can add them to a bar chart component, so we can change the color, bar thickness, and number of bars. We'll explore some more advanced controls so that we can change the text of a line item and hide elements of a code component. Finally, we'll see how powerful property controls can be by adding a component instance. So when we tap on a line item, we navigate to a detail view. Let's get started with a brief explanation of what property controls are, then we'll get our hands dirty. Property controls are a bridge between code components and the canvas. They allow you to surface controls in the properties panel. So when you add your custom code component onto the canvas, you can tweak it without ever having to jump back into the code. This could be simple color changes, copy changes, or even more advanced interactions. Let's add our first property control to a bar chart code component. If you're ever unsure about how something in Framer works, take a look at the Framer API documentation. Taking a look at property controls, you'll be able to see how they're used with sample code on the right hand side. This is a great resource to help you build more flexible components with property controls. If we drag our bar chart code component onto the canvas, it looks okay, but we don't have any control over the color, how many bars are there, or the thickness of the bars. If we wanted to change them, we could go over to the code component and update the default props, but what if we want to reuse our chart for different views with different variables? This is where property controls shine. Let's start off simple. First, we need to import the add property controls function and control type from Framer. At the bottom of our component, let's add a property control for color. The first argument is the component we want to add the property control to, and the second is what controls we want to add. Each key should correspond with the prop we'd like to surface. We want to change the color prop, and we'll tell Framer Web we'd like this to be a color control type. Save your component, jump back over to layers, and choose one of the graphs. On the right side in the properties panel, we can now see a color picker. The control type changes how the control appears in the properties panel, and that changing the color just affects this instance. It's looking good, but at this screen size, the bars are looking too far apart and a bit thin. Let's add a couple more property controls. In our component, let's add a control for the number of bars. This is a number, so we'll add the matching control type, number. We can also add some constraints to make the component easier to use. Let's consider the intent of this property. We need to be able to choose how many bars we show in the chart. So one constraint is that we can't have a negative number. The number control has a minimum of zero, which suits our needs just fine. Another constraint is that we shouldn't really be able to put in a decimal value. 1.5 bars? How do we render that? We can't, so we'll set step to one. This ensures that the number will always be a whole number. While we're adding controls, let's add a property control for the bar thickness too. This will be another number control, but this time we decide we want to constrain the values a bit more. The chart works best with a minimum of two and a max of 30. We'll also allow decimal values by setting the step to 0.1. Taking a look at our prototype, we can now modify each instance to get the feel we need for the design, all with the same component and a few carefully crafted property controls. Now let's take a look at something a bit different. We'll add some property controls to line item to make it more useful. The name is a string, price is a number, and icon color is a color. This adds a lot more flexibility, but let's push it even further. By adding a subtitle, this line item component will be a reusable component for all situations. Firstly, we'll add the subtitle prop to the component and render it below the name. Let's style it with a gray color and smaller font size. We have a subtitle for every line item, but what if we want to make this component more flexible? I don't want a subtitle for every component, 
so we'll make use of the Show Subtitle Prop to control if it's visible or not. We'll add a Show Subtitle Property control that's a Boolean. Its title will be Subtitle, and we'll show the label Show and Hide. We'll allow the subtitle itself to be changed too. Let's hook the Subtitle Property control up so the subtitle doesn't show in the Properties panel if it's hidden. This is achieved with a function called Hidden, so when subtitle is false, we'll hide it. Now you can see that we can toggle the subtitle to show or hide our subtitle text control, and the subtitle on the component itself. This gives us the power to make code components easier to use and very customizable. We can now show the subtitle in some situations, but if we don't need it, the property control isn't taking up extra space and another collaborator using the component won't be confused why the subtitle can be set, but also hidden. You can do a lot with what we've gone over, but we're going to explore one final property control that's even more powerful. The component instance property is a control that can select other components on the canvas. We'll explore two different scenarios which we can use component instances for. The line item component we've created is already pretty flexible, but I'd like to add an icon to it. We have a space where one could go, so let's just start by adding an icon from the default framer components. We'll add one for groceries and another video icon. In our component, we'll accept a new prop, icon component. We're going to render this within the existing icon square. Now we can add a property control with the type component instance. In the canvas, you'll notice there's a new control that has a drop down of everything in the canvas, including the two icons we made. Let's choose the correct icon. And now it's rendered in the line item. Another cool use case for component instance is creating a detail view. We have two different views, one for a normal transaction and another for a subscription. We can navigate to each respective view with an on-click handler. And we'll add a property control so that we can tell each line item where to navigate to. Start by adding the detail view prop and property control. To perform the actual navigation, we'll import Use Navigation from Framer. This hook gives us some methods we can use to animate to a new screen. We're going to add an on-click handler to the container div and perform a push to the new detail view prop. Now we simply connect it to the detail views set up here and try it out. Tapping on the YouTube line item will take us to the YouTube detail view. And if we go back, tapping on Groceries will take us to our Groceries detail view. This concludes exploring property controls and making code components infinitely more useful in Framer Web. We've covered what property controls are, how to add controls for text, numbers, and colors, and finally, we use the component instance to achieve some more complex behavior. Thanks for watching. In the next video, add interaction with code overrides. We'll see how we can make use of a new concept that can be added to code components and design components. Until next time, this has been Coding with Seth.